This is Mark Hubs with Aeros Gone Bullet Molds. A few months ago, I posted a video concerning my Aberti Model 1849 pocket revolver in 31 caliber. If you saw that video, you'll know that I was quite frustrated with it when I took it to the range because of the constant cap jams I had uh, trying to get it to fire. Almost every shot, I would have a cap jam of some kind. And it wasn't long before I figured out what was causing that problem. And it seems to be a common problem with this revolver and other pocket sized revolvers made by Uberti. Two things. First of all, the nipples have a very large vent through the middle of them, which allows a lot of back pressure from each fire chamber uh, coming back to the nipple and blowing off the cap after it's been fired. The second issue is the hammer spring. The hammer springs are extremely weak on these. It's almost just like a piece of sheet metal uh, that's been stamped out. And as a result, because of the weak hammer spring, that back pressure would push the hammer back almost that far. The cap would be blown off and deposited underneath the hammer, thus causing the cap jams. So my intent was to figure out a way to remedy that, remedy that as much as I could. And I did it in two ways. First of all, I changed out the nipples. And you have several different options in that regard. Slip, uh, slick shot nipples will work very well. And I understand now that uh, the newer Uberti pocket revolvers use the same nipples as their 44 and 36 caliber guns uh, instead of a smaller size that used to be uh, used on these. So as a result, any of the slip, slick shot nipples for Uberti uh, for the 36 and, 30, and 44 caliber revolvers will work on your pocket gun if it's a newer, newer version. I used Amco nipples, uh, which is a bronze nipple uh, that has a very small vent and it seems to work pretty good. The only thing about these is that because they're bronze, uh, even when the gun's not loaded, at first glance, you see the copper color or the bra uh, brass color on the nipples and, I, and I'm startled thinking I've got the gun cap. Uh, it took me a while to get used to that. But most importantly is the mainspring. Uh, the mainspring inside these things are just super thin and offer hardly any resistance. And I assume that Uberti has done that uh, just to make the revolver easier to operate and slicker. However, it causes a lot of trouble uh, in the cap jams as we discussed. What I've found is, is that if you buy a second mainspring and install it on top of the first one, uh, you'll double the spring weight and it's very easy to do and it costs about five or six dollars for the spring. The screw that holds the spring on the inside is plenty long enough to attach two springs. So I'm going to show you how to take the grip off on this and add that second spring. Stick with us. You need a good screwdriver, a proper screwdriver, should you ever do any work on your revolvers or any type of fire for that matter. This one is uh, a set made by Brynells and it has a set of tips that I can store in the handle that have all the sizes that I'll need uh, to do work on a Colt uh, revolver or most any other type of uh, black powder revolver. This one actually is the smallest one that gets in, get into the frame screws. Actually, I've had to narrow just a little bit on a belt sander. Just, I mean, just a millimeter off either side to narrow the bit itself. But I really should uh, recommend that you get a, a set of good screwdrivers like this to do any work on your, on your guns. First, you'll need to disassemble the revolver. So knock out the wedge, pull the barrel off, and the cylinder, of course. And then with your good screwdriver, we'll start taking the grip frame off. Now just be aware that the screws on Uberti's and, and most other reproduction revolvers are very soft, so it's very easy to booger up the screws. That's one of the reasons you need a, a good quality screwdriver. I usually loosen the top two first and uh, then the bottom. That releases any pressure that may be on the spring on the inside. And also be aware that the bottom screw uh, is a little different from those top two. It's got a longer, uh, deeper head on it. Uh, it may be the same thread, but the head is different. So uh, pull it aside and then take out the other two. And you should be able to just remove the whole grip frame.
After you move the grip frame, which is the back strap and the grips, it'll expose the mainspring. And I just loosen the mainspring screw just a little bit, press down on the screw, uh, top of the spring and release it from underneath the hammer and then remove the screw completely. And then take your second spring. It'll be exactly the same size. You see there, you see how thin they are. It's very thin metal. To stack the springs and align the holes, put the screw back through the hole and just get it, the screw started. And then with the screwdriver, just get it snug. So you want to be able to swivel, swivel it a little bit. And then depress the top of the springs and get them back underneath the hammer roller. And as you can see, if your hands are, are big and clumsy and greasy now, uh, it may take a couple tries. And then you can uh, torque down the hammer spring screw to make sure it's good and snug. And that's really all there is to it as far as adding that second sp spring. And you can see that the screw is long enough to hold both in place. You also want to put a, uh, a drop of oil between uh, the two screws because they will slide against one another. And uh, if you don't want them to bind up, uh, it's best that they are slightly lubricated. Then all you have to do is uh, put everything back together. I took it to the range to test fire to see if it improved and it did quite a bit. It, it was not perfect, but it was 90% better than it had done before. I was shooting the Aris Gone Bullet Molds 31 caliber Baby Dragoon bullet and this is an 80 grain slug uh, in front of about 12 grains of 3F and I also started off using Remington number 10 caps and I did get some cap jams with the Remingtons. In this string of five, I had one cap jam, and it was the typical type where the cap was blown off and deposited under the hammer and then squashed between the hammer and the frame. And as you can see here, I have to dig it out. I switched to CCI number uh, 11s after this string, and I had no more cap jams. And uh, I don't know if that's just luck or a fluke, or there is a big difference between uh, those two caps in this regard. Next I went to uh, some slow-mo and here's some freeze frame and the idea is to see how much hammer rebound I have uh, at this shot and you can see it's, it's very minimal and I think uh, the heavier springs has really uh, improved the gun in that regard. As you can see I'm also getting uh, enough re recoil to drop the loading lever and I can fix that with a needle file in, in short order. It's the first time I've had this revolver do that. In this string of five, I had one failure to fire, but it was not a cap jam. Uh, one of my CCI 11s just simply blew off the uh, nipple before I had a chance to pop it. And I had to come back later and recap it and fire that round after this uh, part of the video. Other than that, the others... Uh, would fall off uh, to the side just like any other revolver I shoot and uh, had no more problem with the caps getting down underneath the hammer. Overall, uh, I had a great time shooting that day. It's the first time I've taken this gun to the range and did enjoy shooting it because it just didn't give me the problems that I had in the past, at least not to the extent that I had in the past. I hope this was helpful. Uh, keep in mind the same fixes can be used on your Verde Model 1862 Pocket Police or the Pocket Navy. They use the same frame, the same mainspring, uh, the same nipples. So if you're having the same type of problems with those guns, uh, these fixes should help there also. I got my extra mainspring and the nipples from Taylors & Company and I'll put a link to them in the description to this video. And also I'll put a link to my website and I hope you'll visit there sometime if you are interested in the 31 caliber Baby Dragoon bullets 
or any of the other bullet modes that we offer for Civil War period percussion revolvers and carbines. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, and we appreciate you watching.